thank you for attending the Highway Dedication Ceremony for Lance Corporal John Nash. And on behalf of John's daughter, Andrea, his father Dan, mother George Ann, sister and brother, Tanya and Alex, they would like to thank you all for taking time out of your day to come out for this ceremony honoring John. We also would like to thank Oakwood Baptist Church for hosting this event and going out of their way to make sure this event was successful. Please note in your program there is a change as Senator Kevin Bryant is unable to attend this morning due to being called back to Columbia for work. Uh, Senator Bryant is an avid supporter of law enforcement and sends his regrets as he would love to be here and share in this time of uh, honor for John. In the Senator's place, his father, Cliff Bryant, will be reading the resolution for the highway dedication. Would you please rise as Lance Corporal Mike Looney offers opening prayer and remain standing as the South Carolina Patrol, Highway Patrol Honor Guard presents and posts the colors. May we pray? Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have to come today to remember the to actually remember the memories of John Nash, his family sitting here this morning. Lord, thank you for them. My mind goes back not quite a year and a half ago, nor not quite two years ago, when I received a phone call and the somber voice on the other end telling me the news. And I remember, Father, how that my mind spun in different directions and didn't know exactly what to do. But then I remembered that you're my God and that you're my savior and that we need to ask for grace from you and father thank you so much for that thank you for salvation thank you for this family that's here today that's represented i pray that you'd be with each one during this time we know that they still feel the loss and mourn the loss of jonathan and thank you for each member of the highway patrol and a lot of the law enforcement family friends that are here today and the safety that you gave them as they traveled here I pray that you continue to keep us safe and help us to claim that verse in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31, about safety is of the Lord. We know that John served his country well. He served his state well. He served his family well. But most of all, Father, we know that he was a Christian, that he accepted you as a young man. And because of that, Father, we know that we have the glorious hope that we'll see him again one day. Once again, thank you, Father, for these realities, and thank you for the life and for the memory. And as we open up this uh, dedication service today, we just want to say thank you, and we love you. And may your grace be with this family during this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
And following the program, I'd like to introduce the following speakers. Colonel Kenny Lancaster, Interim Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety, followed by the Director will be Captain Gil Owens and Lance Corporal Steve McCarley of the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Good morning. These are tough times for us all to come here to honor John today. I'd be remiss too, I see uh, a lot of fallen troopers, family members that are sitting in the audience and I just want to say thank you for being here today. It's tough for me to stand here in front of this family today and honor John. Um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't thank Chief Keel for being here. Just like these family members, you'll always be a part of our family and thank you for supporting the gray uniform and myself, so thank you. I want to thank the Nash family for the privilege of participating in this highway dedication today on behalf of the men and women of the South Carolina Highway Patrol and the Department of Public Safety. I also would like to thank South Carolina Department of Transportation for your continued support in helping us honor and remember our fallen troopers. This highway dedication is a small way of giving back to the families of our fallen troopers. A lasting tribute to Lance Corporal Jonathan Shay Nash, a man who loved and served his community and state with pride. The sign that will be unveiled today is a reminder of the sacrifice of public service. I knew John not only as a trooper, but as a friend. I supervised him and worked alongside him for several years. John was an easy person to get to know. He was full of humor, loyal to his friends, and passionate about his job on the motor unit. John was an athlete, tall and strong, and a fierce competitor. I am sure you'll hear Mr. Davis share some of those with us today. I think it was John's dream to become an ace motor unit from the moment he put this uniform on. He was persistent until he reached that goal. And that's how he was. When John Nash set his sights on something, he was tenacious about winning. He performed his duties with great pride, but also a humble spirit. Those who knew him remember his smile and good nature. His love for the highway patrol didn't end with his shift ended. When he wasn't with his daughter, Andrea, he was with his fellow troopers, his friends, and we miss him. John joined the Highway Patrol after serving in the Marine Corps. He loved to talk about the Marines. It was evident that he had learned a great deal about brotherhood, sacrifice, and selflessness it takes to honorably serve his state and his country from this elite group. I am proud to stand here today to honor this fine trooper. This highway sign will serve as a permanent and concrete tribute to the place law enforcement officers hold in preserving peace and bringing order to our communities. It also will remind the public of the danger embedded in this profession. Mr. and Mrs. Nash, please accept once again our love and humble gratitude for John's sacrifice to the state of South Carolina. The memory of our friendship with John will remain with us forever. You will always be a part of this family. May God bless you and your family. Good morning, and I just want to tell the Nash family I'm honored uh, to stand up here and speak about John. And I'm honored that his name will be represented on the Interstate I-85 
at exit 27, which was unveiled at 10 o'clock this morning. So on your way out, please look at those signs. Remember what John's legacy was about and the sacrifice that he made for the Highway Patrol. I want to share a few stories this morning about John. I hope they make you laugh, and as they did me. Uh, some of these stories have never been shared. Uh, I hope I don't throw anybody under the bus, but uh, some of them are quite funny. Um, for those of you who don't know, John and I were roommates in the academy. Uh, we spent four months together, hard, long months, as most of you can contest to as well. And the relationship you build in those four months, as Steve can contest, as he was our sweet mate, and we argued about how long Steve was taking time to shave his head in the, in the, in the bathroom or, or was taking up time in the shower. But uh, those were good memories. But the first one I recall was we'd been in the academy about a month. We're down at the firing range, and uh, a motorcycle unit pulled up. And the motorcycle unit had just been reformed a couple months prior to our class starting. And uh, this unit pulled up, and John and I were salivating over the motorcycle. And you could tell we both wanted to ask a question, but just didn't have the nerve to do it. And fortunately for us, there was one trooper in our class that was a little dumber than we were. He asked the motor officer, he said, what does it take to ride one of those? And the trooper paused a minute, and he looked at him, and he said, son, when you get five years old, you come back and ask me that question. And John and I were thankful that there was one person in our class that was dumber than we were to ask a question. We knew as trooper trainees that was something you just didn't do. When we got back to our room that night, we sat there and was both thankful that we didn't raise our hand and ask that question, but it sparked a conversation of love for motorcycles that we both shared that we both didn't know that we had. It started off, of course, the program chips that we both loved and, and uh, kind of followed over to the Dukes of Hazard. And for y'all that didn't know, John was an actor as well. He could imitate Roscoe Pico train better than anybody I'd ever seen. And he would come in the, in the room at night before we go to bed. He, he would go, get, 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 get him, Flash. <laughs> and he had it down pat. The second story I want to tell you was the tough guy that he was. Uh, several years back, we decided we'd have a cookout at a friend's house and that we would spend the night there and cook out, and I decided to bring my tent. It was about 22 degrees, and I had my tent, I had my air mattress, I had my heater, I had my warm socks, and I had everything in between that that Coleman supplied. I had it. And John decided he was going to stay as well, but he had his Marine Corps sleeping bag, and he decided he would sit and can't sleep in the middle of the field, not in the, sleeping, or not in the tent with me, not on the air mattress, not in the heat, and I begged him three or four times to please come in, and in the tent, it was a four-man tent, we had plenty of room. Went to sleep that night, and I woke up, and John was still laid in the middle of that Bermuda grass field at 22 degrees, and that Marine Corps sleeping bag, and all you could see was the smoke coming out of that little <laughs> mouth hole. I didn't want to bother him, I packed everything up, and I was getting ready to leave, and I thought, you know, it'd be kind of rude of me not to at least say bye, so I beeped a horn, and when I did, I saw two fingers come out the little manhole, and he did a little sign like that. And <laughs> and went on back to sleep. So that was the tough guy he was. The honest guy he was was not long after I'd been in view for about two years, an uh, acquaintance of mine introduced me to a guy and we become good friends and about a year later we both were, uh, our leases were up in our apartments, we decided that we would become roommates and get a house together and one night we were talking and he said that he was a graduate from Lander University. I said, well that was kind of neat. I said, my roommate in patrol school was a graduate from Lander University. And he said, well my roommate that was in Lander is now a trooper in Union County. I said, well, that's kind of odd. I said, my roommate in patrol school that went to Lander is now a trooper in Union County. And lo and behold, it was John. We both had something in common where he was his roommate in college and my roommate in patrol school. So we knew we had to play a joke on John. And uh, as Major Madden could probably attest that my day's coming, because I like to pull off jokes. So we called John, and John had no idea that we knew each other. And I was on the other line, and Steve called John and said, uh, John, hey, it's Steve Clifton. I ain't talked to you in a while. And he's like, hey, you know, how you doing? Good to hear from you. How you been? And Steve said, I hadn't been too good. He said, what's wrong? He said, man, I got arrested last night for drinking and driving. And John said, really? He said, man, I, I hate that. There's uh, nothing I can do for you. He said, but uh, who got you? He said, well, it was a little trooper, a little short, stocky guy. He said, uh, to be honest with you, he was kind of rude and kind of tough and rough and kind of roughed me up a little bit and knocked me around. And, he said, I, you know, I don't think all that was called for. And John said, well, what was his name? He said, uh, Steve said, I think his last name was Owens. And John said, G.S. Owens? He said, yes, him. 
And John paused for a minute and he goes, well, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, that's not like his character, that's not his demeanor, and that's not his integrity. And that very well surprises me that you would say those things about him. He said, but, um, you know, I'm sorry for what happened. And we started laughing and we started laughing. John couldn't figure out what was going on and then we told him, let him in on the story. And he laughed and laughed and couldn't believe that us two had come across paths in our life. And I guess it was about two weeks ago that story uh, come back to me. <clears throat> And I thought about the words John could have said. He could have went right along with Steve and said, yeah, that's his character, that's his integrity, that's how he was in patrol school, and just kind of ended the conversation with that, but he didn't. He stood up what was for right. He stood up for integrity, honesty, because he knew me, he knew that wasn't my demeanor. And it took... I guess eight or nine years for that story to come back to me to reflect on what John truly was about, which was integrity. Another story I want to share is the last one is not long after John's death, Mr. Nash had asked us to help him at John's house, and me and Jimmy and Scott had went to his house to help him straighten up, and we got there, and I quickly realized in about 10 minutes that's the place you wanted to be if World War III came, because there was a gun in every corner, every crevice, on top of the refrigerator, under the mattresses, in the couch, in the walls, in the yard, in the shed, in the pump house. I mean, they were, they were everywhere. And as we went to the bathroom, we opened some cabinets and there was every shampoo bottle, conditioner bottle, bar of soap, toothpaste that every hotel had ever owned. <laughs> it was evident when John was out of town with the motor unit or at the bike week at the beach that he would hoard those things up because they were used, they were slightly used, but he didn't want to go to waste. And every package of top ramen noodles and every MRE that the military had ever made was stuffed somewhere in that house. And I told uh, Jimmy and, and uh, Scott, I said, man, if World War III breaks out, I know where to go. I'll close with a letter that was written about John shortly after his death. It says, Jonathan Shea Nash was one of the nicest people you ever meet. His smile could light up the whole sky, and his crystal blue eyes stood out like the bright blue sky on a beautiful sunny day. John was very nice, and he wouldn't hurt a fly. He was a South Carolina state trooper, and every single breath he took was devoted to his job, his family, and what he loved the most, riding motorcycles. And John was tall like the Empire State Building, and he looked very intimidating, but he, wouldn't go, he, would, but he would go to the moon and back before we'd ever lay a hand on anyone. When he spoke, his voice was deep, but things he said to other people were some of the nicest things you'd ever heard. John was so devoted to his job because he loved what he did. John was my dad's best friend, and, that was they, and they were a part of the ACE team, which was the motorcycle patrol unit for the South Carolina Highway Patrol. It was an honor for him to be selected for this because everyone knew John would be committed. If he did something wrong, he wouldn't argue back like a stubborn teenager. He would just reply with, yes, sir, or, yes, ma'am, and would continue, continue on learning from his mistakes. John was a great worker, and any problems that he was faced with, he would solve them in an orderly fashion. If you didn't know John, you would love to have met him, but on September 19, 2009, something tragic happened. John was killed in a motorcycle crash while doing a memorial ride for another trooper that had gotten killed a while back. We miss John every day, but there's no doubt in our minds that he is in heaven. Even though he is not with us today, in our hearts he will always know and be remembered his, by his big blue eyes, his voice, his smile, and last but not least, his courage. If it wasn't for guys like John, our everyday lives would be in danger. Thank you for your devotion and willpower. We miss you, and may you rest in peace. Amber Strait, age 12. Thank you. Mr. and Ms. Nash, thank you for the honor of being a part of this service. I met Big John in patrol school. As most of you remember, when we reported down to the academy, for some reason I hadn't figured out to this day, they had us out in the parking lot marching. And John Nash was one of those people that could march, one of the few people that could march. You didn't know anybody at that time, but later on that day I found out that John would be my roommate along with Gil and Glenn Matthews. And I gotta tell you, while I wasn't in the exact room with him, I was in his room almost as much as I was in my own. And I grew to love him and Gil through the struggle of patrol school and all the challenges that presented themselves while we were there. And it was shocking to me to find out he was from Anderson and I didn't know him. 
but we had so much in common. And one of the things that stands out in my mind after you call me Mr. Nash, and I've thought of it over these last 16, 17, 18 years is, you know, part of our training at the academy, uh, we got certified with pepper spray. And some people call it training, but I call it uh, organized hazing by the training unit. <laughs> if they're not shooting you in the face with pepper spray, they're shooting you in the back with a taser. And I remember we had to wait in line, and because my name was McCarley and John being a Nash was just behind me, they warned us before we got in line that the blue-eyed, light, fair-skinned people would hurt more, and their words proved to be true. But I remember as I got my arm stretched out and the trainer shot me in the face with the pepper spray and I staggered down to where they had had some hose pipes and I gotta tell you, there's not a man walking on the face of the earth that could have got that hose pipe out of my hand that day. The pain was unbelievable and it took me a quite a considerable amount of time to get off the hose pipe. But I remember, I tried to get off of it two or three times but went back to it. I remember when I finally got off of it, I remember looking up, as those of you have had that pleasure of pepper spray, I remember, I remember seeing John standing because the line was held up because those of us on the hose pipe were there too long. And I remember seeing him sprayed. And then I got off the hose pipe, and when I got to the, it was kind of down in a flat area, and when I got to the top of the hill, there he sat. And I thought, Jeremy, what are you, what, you know, how did you get here before I did? I've been 15, 20 minutes getting off a hose pipe. How did, I've never been so shocked in all my life. Of course, still in pain, so I didn't say anything to him. But once we got cleaned up and got ready to go, I said, John, did they miss you? Did they not hit you with it? He said, Steve, it's nothing. If you could have been with us in the Marine Corps when they'd put us in those bunkers and drop tear gas on us, you couldn't get out. All you had to do was sit there. And I got to tell you, pepper spray is not that bad. <laughs> Another story uh, I want to share with you that means a lot to me is we had finished our training. We had got our assignment. You know, I don't know how they do it now. I think it's changed. And I'm glad it did. But they didn't tell you anything until the day you graduated. You was in the blind to the last minute. There's a reason for that. There was a reason then for that. But I remember we got our assignments and I was somewhat distraught because I had not got the assignment I had really hoped and prayed for. Uh, and to, just to be honest with you, I was upset and I was angry. Well, they loaded us up and took us over to the DOT off behind Shop Road to get our patrol cars. There again, we're in line. Always, John was always behind me, Big John, Gil. And uh, one of our classmates got the assignment that I wanted. And he probably didn't realize how agitated he was in bragging about the assignment that I wanted. And the more he talked and the more he made known his pleasure about his assignment, the matter I got. And just out of nowhere, John stepped up and he told our classmate that it would be wise probably to quit speaking because you stand in probability of a simple assault here right here in the DOT. <laughs> Now, he didn't say it quite in those terms, but the person doing the talking listened to him. You see, John Nash was a peacemaker, and he was a man of few words, so when he did speak, people listened. And I, he saved my career right off day one. Wouldn't it have been something being fired on graduation day? But that's the relationship we had. John was a graduate of this Christian school here at Oakwood Baptist Church, and I gotta tell you, living and working in this community and living here 50 years, this is an elite school. And Mr. and Ms. Nash, you've done your family well by sending him here. Uh, they get a better education, I gotta tell you. John not only was a graduate here at Oakwood, but he was a graduate of college. And anybody that graduates college in my book is a smart person and above average. John was a U.S. Marine. One of my boys served in the Marine Corps, and I have a special love for Marines. I think they're the greatest fighting force on the face of the earth and probably in the history of warfare. They're the greatest warriors that have ever been trained fighting for the greatest country that's ever existed. You're talking about selfless service, 
John shared with me some things that he experienced while he was in the Marine Corps, and it just caused me to respect him even more. But I want to talk to you for just a moment longer about a quality about John that means a lot to me personally, and that is that John Nash was a humble person. He was a humble man. Humility is not a hot item in today's world. And humility is not weakness. Don't get confused because when you think about John Nash, there's nothing about no weakness about him. He was smart. He was strong. He was a large person. So don't get confused with humility having anything to do with meekness. I have discovered, as I've studied through the Bible many times, that and I've experienced it in my own life that the pathway to God is a pathway of submission and a pathway of humility. Submission is what I think about and humility when I think about John. Because John chose humility over pride. He chose submission over selfish ambition. He chose contentment rather than to be disgruntled and discontented all the time. And there was times when he was at home, he would call me and I'd swing by and pick him up. And he was content and happy. And that's a rare commodity in this day in which we live. Jesus said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And it's not by accident that we're here today to honor a person that was extremely humble. Jesus was forever telling his disciples that the first will be last and the last will be first. That is in contrary and contradiction to this world system. The other thing is I've found that God has always resisted those who are proud and he has always helped those who are humble. That's a promise that he's made. And over my years of being a Christian, I have found that God has never made a promise that was too good to be true. John and I had many spiritual discussions because we had basically the same background and the same interest in spiritual things. And i got to stand before you and tell you, I believe John Nash was a Christian. Christians are those individuals who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not for just those who trust him. It is those who walk the path of humility. For those who come to him must humble themselves. But for those like John who choose Jesus Christ, we have the promise of the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life. The scripture says, by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It, it is the gift of God. It is not by works, lest anyone should boast. And I got to tell you, when I think about how John loved his family, especially his daughter, we talked about you. I remember when you were born. He was so very proud of you. And you know, we had dinner on the grounds at the church, and just before he was killed, we, I got to sit down at the table, Mr. Nash, with you and your granddaughter and with John and just have a time together. Special to me now. He was a man that loved his family and especially his daughter. John Nash loved America and served her with honor and distinction. He did not pick the easy path. He picked the hardest one. He loved the highway patrol and he genuinely cared about those around him. He was my friend and he was a great asset to the patrol in the way he conducted his business. He was a great American, much deserving the honor we give him this day. And I leave you with this promise that I hope will speak to you and give you comfort in these days. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. I'd like to now introduce the next two speakers to you. First would be in your program, Colonel Bob Davis, United States Marine Corps Reserve, retired. Colonel Davis is, was also John's high school coach, so I'm sure he'll share some stories about John in his high school days. Following uh, Colonel Davis will be uh, Cliff Bryant, the father to Senator Kevin Bryant, who will read the resolution and at the conclusion of the reading, we'll join Andrea down here in front of the, the sign and do the unveiling for you. So please give your attention to Colonel Davis. Mr. and Miss Nash, I'm glad you included me in this today. John meant a lot to me. 
I have several of my boys out here. I call them my boys. They're grown men now. They'll always be my boys. Some of them are out there in the audience today. Played basketball and soccer for me. And uh, John was a good athlete. Uh, he was a good person. He did have some, we did have some humorous times. I remember one time in a basketball game. Now, John is a tall guy. And underneath, he was very aggressive. He was a guy that could get the rebounds and, you know, put the shot up underneath. But uh, dribbling wasn't one of his expertise, okay? So uh, he, uh, he and another boy, they got underneath. So I had, you know, some can dribble, some can shoot, some can, you know, and you put it together as a team. So for some strange reason, this, uh, we were going down the basketball court and we were taking the ball out, and I see John dribbling the ball down the court. Well, this particular team we were playing had a, he was a tall athlete, but he could dribble and do lots of other things as well, very skilled. And he took the ball away from John. And of course, uh, we ended up winning the game, but it was kind of getting, you know, close and you, everybody was losing their head, so I called the timeout. And uh, my players knew I wasn't real happy. We had one of those little Coach Davis prayer meetings over there at the side, <laughs> and I pray over him. <laughs> And I looked at John, and I said, Nash, what are you doing dribbling the basketball? Why didn't you give it to – he said, you know, John, you know, John. <laughs> he said, don't worry, though, Coach. He said, when we get back down underneath, he said, I'm going to crush him. <laughs> <laughs> and we got back down underneath, and John, in fact, did uh, out-rebound the guy, and we ended up – over the game, over the course of the game, we ended up winning. But uh, he was that kind of an athlete. Then I can remember another, it was kind of a coincidence, a Marine story with John. John was an inf infantryman, an 0341. He was an inf infantry mortarman. Now, I don't know how many of you people out there know anything about mortars, but anyway, it's a, it's a high trajectory weapon that we use in combat. And it's sometimes difficult to, to uh, learn because there's a lot of math and things that, that's associated with this. And I was going to nuclear, biological, chemical warfare school at the same time. And I found out that John's unit that he was training with was there. So I kind of walked up onto him one day and scared him. He was there playing around with the, on the base plate. He couldn't get the mortar on. And I remember sitting down trying to, we sat there for about an hour, me explaining to him how to put all this thing together and get this gadget. And finally he caught on and he was doing okay. And he said, what are you here for? And of course, there weren't any other Marines around, so he, instead of, I was a major at the time, so instead of saying, sir, he's just calling me coach because that's what he had done all of his life. He said, what are you doing here, coach? And I said, well, I'm going to NBC school. He said, I didn't know the TV people were going to be here. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, no, John, it's not the National Broadcasting Company. I said, this nuclear, biological, chemical warfare school. He said, I didn't even know they had that in the Marines. <laughs> I said, you haven't been in long enough to learn all that. So, and we'd been over there, and he said, are you one of those people, uh, coach, been over there with those little funny little suits on? <laughs> and I said, yeah, that was me. And uh, we, we talked and went on. Then uh, one night at the dinner table, uh, so one of my buddies, had, one of my former players, every once in a while they'll call you. You'll get wedding invitations, letters, emails, and first one thing from some of my players. And one of my players told me that John Nash had got accepted into the highway patrol. It's going to be a highway patrol. And my wife and I, we weren't able to have children, okay? So I, and I always tell my kids, when I ask you, do you have any kids? I'll say, no, my wife, you, we, Ms. Davis and I weren't able to have children, so you're my kids. And they really are. I spent my, all my, most of my time with kids. But, uh, but it was a, Wonderful day. I told my wife when I got off the phone, I said, you know, guess what just happened? I said, what? I said, John Nash is going to be a highway patrolman. Of course, you know, women, ladies, first thing they think of is danger and all this. And I said, yeah, but this is great. Just think, do you know how hard it is to get into the highway patrol, Kathy? I said, that is one of the toughest outfits to get into. He got accepted and he's going. And I said, Nash will make it. He's tough, and he'll be a good highway patrolman. He's a good Marine, and he'll be a good highway patrolman. So several years later, time had passed. I didn't, didn't get to see John. I just know he had gone into the highway patrol. And uh, I saw him. We bumped into each other, and he had his 
uniform on, looked real sharp. I was talking to him. And I said, I guess I better be careful now, John. I said, uh, you can, I might get arrested for all those things I used to do to you in practice. <laughs> he looked at me and laughed. He said, only if you try to make me do a suicide coach. <laughs> but uh, that was the kind of man John was. And uh, I had great memories of him. And uh, I would be, uh, I need to, one thing I would like to do today, and I'm sure if John, if John was here, I, he'd wanted me to do this. Uh, I'm glad John was a highway patrolman. And I look at you ladies and gentlemen out there in front of me and you people behind me. And John chose a profession as a servant. That's what you people do. You serve people every day. Marines serve people every day. That's what, John had a servant's heart. He chose the Marine Corps. He served in the forces, which guards our country and our way of life. And he was prepared to give their, his life in their defense. And basically, that's what you gentlemen do every day. There's only one difference between you people and Marines, and soldiers, and sailors, and airmen, and Coast Guardsmen. When I came back from Iraq, I can take my pack off. I can put it down and take a breather. What a lot of people don't know is law enforcement people don't get to do that. And I was the G3 at Camp Lejeune. We had to put people out the door to go to Iraq. That was my first responsibility before I ever got to go and fight in the big war. I had to get everybody to the war. And I dealt with all kinds of law enforcement people. And one thing about a law enforcement person, uh, they say, quote, I know you, quote, get a day off. But if you walk into a store someplace and you see somebody or, or anywhere breaking the law, by the uh, oath that you've been sworn under, even though it may be your day off, you have to arrest them. And on your day off, you have to go to court sometime. So basically, you never have a day off. Once you put that uniform on, you're there 24-7, 365 days a year, and ever how long you can go before you have to do what the Marine Corps did to me. I got in the Marine Corps, and I never could figure out how to get out. So when 30 and a half years come, they told me, You've worn your welcome, Matt, and you got to get out. So I'm sure there's a time and a period like that with you gentlemen and you ladies. That day will come. But uh, I was proud that John chose that profession. He was a servant in the Marine Corps, and he served his country. Then he became a highway patrolman, and he served the state of South Carolina and the people. And he kept the roads and the highways safe for all of us so that we can do those things. And I thank God. For John Nash, Mr. and Ms. Nash, and I'm thankful that you allowed me to have some time with John because it was special. And I'll never forget Lance Corporal John Nash, State Highway Patrolman. Thank you. What a great privilege is it me today uh, to come and stand in for Kevin. I talked to Kevin this morning, and he just reminded again how disappointed he was to come, to not be able to be with you, Mr. Nash, and your family. Uh, he, uh, he, he just loves the law enforcement. He supports them. And he just, again, reanimated this morning that he just so disappointed he couldn't be here. Uh, I didn't know Jonathan, but I did get to know Mr. Nash. We sweated out a lot of times out at the Y, and uh, we tried to keep our bones working as we grow older and get the gray hairs in our eyes and, and our hair, but uh, uh, I just respect him. Uh, notice how he was hurt. I couldn't relate to him because I have three boys and can't imagine, can't imagine what he ha has gone through. And I just respect you, Mr. Nash, and just uh, thank you again for the privilege that I can be here today to read this resolution. When Kev, uh, Kevin and Dr. Billy O'Dell introduced this, with his record and his achievement, there was no problem getting this passed right through. So again, uh, he just wanted to express again his disappointment he couldn't be here. Uh, the resolution states that a concurrent resolution to request that the Department of Transportation Name the interstate location at exit 27 along Interstate Highway 85 in Anderson County, Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Nash Interchange. 
and erect appropriate markers or signs at the interchange that contains the words Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Nash Interchange. Whereas Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Nash was born on June the 1st, 1968 in Bradenton, Florida, the son of Dan and George Ann Nash of Anderson, South Carolina. And whereas a graduate of Landers College, he served his country with honor and great distinction to the United States Marine Corps from 86 to 93. And during Operation Desert Storm, whereas he joined the state Highway to, uh, Department of uh, Patrol in 1994 and was assigned to the Aggressive Criminal Enforcement Team, Regional 3 Motorcycle Unit. And whereas Lance Corporal Nash was a member of Oakwood Baptist Church. Whereas Lance Corporal Nash tragically lost his life on September the 19th, 2009, while escorting a charity ride in Camden in honor of Trooper Hardy M. Gohobo, who was killed in the line of duty in 1992. Whereas Lance Corporal Nash, who was survived by his parents and daughter Andrea, was an excellent trooper and well loved by all who knew him. Whereas it would be fitting and proper to name the interchange located at exit 27 along Interstate Highway 85 in Anderson County, the Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Nash interchange as a lasting memorial to this fallen trooper. Now therefore, be it resolved by the state, the House of Representatives concurring that the member of the General Assembly requests that the Department of Transportation Name the interchange located at exit 27 along Interstate Highway 85 in Anderson County, Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Nash Interchange, and erect appropriate markers or signs in this interchange that contain the words Lance Corporal Jonathan Shea Interchange, Shea Nash Interchange. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Department of Transportation. I hereby certify that the foregoing is a true and correct copy of a resolution passed in the Senate and concurred in by the House. It was signed by Jeffrey Gossett, Clerk of the Senate. So I'd like to now uh, present this to Andrea. And Andrea, would you come down? We will unveil the marker. Thank you, Mr. Bryant, Coach Davis. Would you please, I shouldn't have had you sit down, would you please rise again for the closing prayer and also the retiring of the colors. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you allowed John Nash to be a part of our lives. Although he was here but for a short while, the way he impacted our lives will never be, never be forgotten, Lord. We know that John had a servant's heart because he chose the, by the professions he chose. Lord, he chose to be a Marine, to serve his country. Lord, he was prepared to give his life, Lord, in, in the defense of his country. Then after that, Lord, he chose the highway patrol where he again would serve people. He put others ahead of self. And Lord, by doing that, he emulated you, Lord, because that's exactly what you did. 
he came to the earth, he healed the lame, the sick, but yet you were humble enough, Lord, that you washed your disciples' feet and that then died on the cross to save us. Lord, we're thankful that John took the path that he did. Now, Lord, we pray now for these, uh, also, for these uh, men and women here that are still alive, that are still out there and facing danger and harm's way every day. Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with them, Lord, and when they get into tough situations, give them the courage they need. Lord, may your guiding and safe hand be upon these highway patrolmen as they go out and do their job. Lord, we pray that, um, that you would be with these individuals in a special way. And Lord, we're thankful, for Lord, that John took this path. Now, Father, we commit this service and this dedication to you in your wonderful and holy name. Amen. On behalf of the John Nash family, thank you all for attending this service to morning, to celebrate this morning, to celebrate with them this highway dedication. This concludes the service. Thank you for coming, and God bless you.